Samples of hot mix asphalt are required to be taken from the mat behind the laydown machine prior to compaction. A pair of boxes is obtained for each sample, each box containing at least 30 pounds of mixture. A minimum of four increments are required for a sample. An agency inspector will direct and witness the sampling. To obtain each increment, one of the four required transverse locations is selected and a template is pushed down through the mat. Using a square scoop, all the material inside the template is carefully removed and placed into one box. It is helpful to distribute each scoop of the material across the length of the box to minimize segregation of the sample. All the mix sticking to the scoop and inside wall of the template must be scraped off and included in each increment. A putty knife or spatula works well for scraping the tools. Once all the tools are cleaned, the sampler is ready to obtain material for the second box. The template is then moved longitudinally and the process is repeated for the second box. A pair of boxes is needed because both the contractor and the DOT district lab must have enough material to perform all the required tests on each sample. It is important to remove all the material inside the template and scrape the inside of the template and the scoop each time. The material that sticks to the tools is rich in asphalt binder and the fines from the aggregate. A significant amount of fines can stick to the tools, especially in cool weather. It is not allowed to coat the template and scoop with a solvent to try to prevent material from sticking because this could contaminate the sample. When all the material for both boxes has been removed from the first of the four sample locations, the sampler moves forward to near the laydown machine and selects another of the four transverse locations to obtain the second increment of the sample. Moving forward between each increment assures that the sample will be spread out over at least two truckloads of mixture, as required, and also keeps the sampler ahead of the rolling operation, reducing the interference with the compaction of the mat, which must be done before the mat cools.
setting the template fully through the mat, scooping out all of the mix inside, and scraping the tools for each increment of the sample needs to be done as consistently and as quickly as possible, but doing it right is more important than doing it fast. Some samplers have constructed box carriers to make it easier to move the boxes with mixture in them. Carriers can be as elaborate as the ones this sampler is using, or as simple as a strap or a thin metal sheet bent to fit around the box with a rope handle. Some samplers use coolers that closely fit the boxes. Coolers have the advantage of holding the heat in the sample so the box that the contractor must test can be sent to the contractor's quality control lab and will require less reheating to prepare the test specimens. Remember, the mat is around 300 degrees Fahrenheit, so always wear gloves. If your hand slips off the template while pushing it into the mat, gloves will save you from a serious burn. Boots with thick soles are also a good idea. The square scoops used for sampling are designed to make it easy to remove the material along the edges and in the corners of the template. Getting all the mix out of the template is essential to provide a representative sample. Only when sampling from a mat laid directly on a soil or aggregate subgrade is it allowed to leave a small amount of mixture in the bottom of the template in order to avoid contaminating the sample with subgrade material. If a sample becomes contaminated at any time, it should be discarded and a new sample obtained to replace it. When the process is completed at the second location, there are still two more locations that must be sampled to complete the sampling procedure. Some samplers like to walk out on the platform on the back of the screed to get the sample locations in the middle of the mat or to cross the mat. Just be careful if you do this. The machine may be moving and it is easy to lose your balance when carrying samples and tools. There are other hazards the sampler needs to be aware of besides the hot material being sampled. Be sure the roller operators are aware of your presence when you are on the mat. They have a lot of things to watch and they may not be watching for you. Being safety conscious is always a part of the job at a construction site.
Be sure that the four increments included in each sample are from the areas of the mat as directed in Materials IM322. The four required sample areas are approximately one foot from the edge of the mat on both sides of the mat and approximately one foot either side of the center of the mat. Any modifications to the sampling procedures for special situations need to be approved by the district materials engineer first. Besides the heat and machinery the sampler must be aware of, there may be another hazard nearby. If traffic is being allowed to flow through the work zone, there is always a danger. Some drivers get distracted by looking at the big machines laying the asphalt or rolling the mat and don't notice someone bent over working near the edge of the closed lane. Always be aware of your location and the location of the traveling public. When all the sampling is completed, there is one more important duty the sampler must perform. The samples need to be clearly identified so the laboratory technicians who test the samples can keep the proper records of where the samples came from. It is best to write all the required information directly on the sample box. One box of the pair will be provided to the agency's inspector who will fill out a sample identification form, secure the sample, and return it to the contractor for transportation. The sampler's job is very important to the quality control and quality assurance process because many decisions will be based on the results of the tests performed on the samples. If samples are not obtained properly or are not representative of the pavement, incorrect decisions may be made, payment to the contractor may be affected, and the quality of the constructed pavement could be compromised. So do it right every time.